Ah, uh, see some new faces. Let's rise and let's greet one another and have a wonderful time. All right. I am. celebration service and my name is Reverend Doug Worth and I will be your platform assistant this morning all right a little bit different yeah and I'm joined by the uh, right Reverend Landis Bats on the keyboard and vocals yeah heading up our music glad to have you back Landis all right yeah thank you and our special guest speaker this morning is Judy Herman Judy just, there she is Okay, and a little bit more about Judy in just in just a few moments. And Shannon is on our technical side, making sure that our uh, Facebook and internet presence is available out there for everyone in uh, Cyberland. And by the way, by the way, we took a look at some of the uh, Facebook and, and internet um, uh, feedback mechanisms. And there were 1,300 people who saw Penny's Church Facebook post last week with Albert Einstein. 1,300, yes. Yeah. And Shannon was telling me the other day that 1,500 people saw some or all of last week's service through the internet. Now that's incredible. Now here's the other thing about that. I know enough about these uh, these feedbacks that some of those bits were 15 seconds and then they went someplace else. Okay. Or, so I don't think 1,500 people watched the whole service last week. But nevertheless it's out there yeah. and, and it's available. And if somebody sees something that they like then then it's, then it's worthwhile. So I, I think that's incredible. So first of all, I want to thank Shannon for all the help that he has done to get the Unity message out there and available. Yeah. And secondly, I want to welcome all of you who are watching on Facebook this morning and through the internet. 
And please say hello in the comment section and be sure to give us a thumbs up so that we can trigger all those great algorithms uh, in the cloud that help others find us. And uh, please feel free to communicate with each other and with us during the service. And for those of you who watching who are watching us on live, uh, live this morning through Facebook, um, if you know of someone that you would think would benefit from this message, uh, please invite them to share uh, this message by hitting the share button. And if you're here with us this morning live, joining us, um, or if you're relatively new to Unity, uh, there is a welcome package on the on the back table, and it will give you a little more information about Unity as a church and a spiritual movement, and you're welcome to take uh, one home with you and perhaps take one for a friend, so they're on the back table. And if you're relatively new uh, with us this morning, if this is your first time with us, or if you're watching us for the first time on the internet, Unity of Chattanooga is part of a worldwide network of Unity churches, founded in the late 1800s by Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. The Fillmores started studying Jesus' teachings in the Bible in an effort to overcome a variety of personal difficulties and to improve their lives. And through study and personal spiritual practice, what they found was so transformational that they dedicated their lives to developing and teaching what they termed practical Christianity. Now today, Unity is a progressive and inclusive spiritual community, embracing both the traditional teachings of Jesus and the modern scientific and psychological principles of a healthy and inspired lifetime. We emphasize prayer and meditation, personal study and growth, living consciously and making a positive difference in the world. And we are here to grow and transform our lives. And as we do, we believe that we transform not only ourselves and our families and our working environments, but the world. The foundation of the Fillmore's lives and spiritual practice was prayer and meditation. So today, it's our spiritual practice to start all of our activities and all of our services with prayer. So we begin this morning by lighting the Christ candle. And as we light this candle, we bring that light into our own lives. We take a moment and I invite you into that quiet and still space within. Feel free to close your eyes if that works for you. And I invite you to take a deep infilling breath. Just breathe it in and let it go. And on that out breath, let go of the to-do list. Let go of all the things that are coming up next week. Just be here, be now, be still. And in that quiet and still presence, imagine a golden white light surrounding your body and that light flowing down through your head, across your shoulders, down through your chest and your abdomen and your legs, down through your feet and deep into the earth, deep into Mother Earth, a healing presence. And let that earth energy of life itself flow back up through your legs, back up through your hips and your abdomen, back up through your chest and your shoulders, and flowing back out through the top of your head to Father God, Father, Mother God. In this quiet and still place, you are healed, you are whole, and there is a vision of inspiration for your life. 
flowing through you this very moment in a guiding and still presence that simply says, you are the beloved in whom I am so well pleased. And as we feel that presence, we know that all is truly well. So we give thanks and simply say, Amen, and it is so. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers, listen to what they're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness. God is always there and every thought becomes a prayer every thought is a prayer and if you have a prayer request this morning now is an opportunity to simply raise your hand and Terry is our chaplain and myself will be there and we will pray with you. Does anyone have a prayer request? It's always like pulling teeth every morning until we get going. Does anyone have a prayer request? Penny. Penny. So two weeks ago, I asked for prayer for a friend named David, who currently has a kidney stone in a, a kidney transplant, so it's not in a place where the doctors can normally go. And it was my intention to hold him in prayer this week about that, because they're still deciding how to remove this. And so I went to my mentor, Abraham Hicks, to ask about that. And what I realized is that I was praying for the problem, because whenever we mention it, that's what we give energy to. Which then reminded me that when Myrtle got her terminal uh, diagnosis for tuberculosis, she prayed about it, and she prayed about it, and she prayed about it. And one day, the voice said, you know, you've prayed about your weaknesses. Now pray about what's good. And that turned it around. And you know, when she passed, I'm sure there was no tuberculosis in her system. So this morning, I'm gonna pray for David. And I'd like you all to join me. So I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to envision David sitting in the comfort of his own home this morning, watching us resting and relaxing and being totally open to receive all the goodness that a universe that adores him is willing to give him. And in this moment, we are reminded that the donor of this kidney was actually his beautiful wife. And it was given in love and right now, that love-filled kidney is sending that vibration throughout his whole body, bringing forth the healing and the wholeness that he seeks for himself and that we seek for him as well. So we thank you, God, for always guiding us and directing us in that perfect direction to bring about all those things that our hearts desire. Amen. Wow. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. You know, we teach prayer, and last week I, I noticed there was a number of people in the congregation who were praying with each other. And w what I can tell you is that gives me personally such a beautiful feeling that not only are these teachings working, but once again, we can truly say, all 
as well. Our thoughts are prayers and we always pray. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what they're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. something to say. I'm not asking you to move on or forget it, but these are better days. To be wrong all along and admit it is not amazing grace, but to be loved like a song you remember even when you've changed. Tell me did I go on a tangent did I lie through my teeth did I cause you to stumble on your feet did I bring shame on my family the show when I was Whatever you see, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. When you're lost, you will toss every lucky coin you'll ever trust. And you'll hide from love like it'll ever turn his back on us. Then you fall all the way to the bottom and land on your knife. But you learn who you are even if it doesn't take your life. Tell me Did I go on a tangent? Did I lie through my teeth? Did I cause you to stumble on your feet? Did I bring shame on my family? Does it show when I am weak? Whatever you see, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. But I want you to know that you'll never be alone. I want to believe that I may to everyone I meet when you fell did I get you on your feet and I spent time with my family and it shows when I am weak when that's what you see that will be me that will be me. That's really me.
That's why you're the right reverend, baby. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was perfect. Thanks. Well, this morning I want to welcome Judy Herman as our guest speaker for the very first time. She's a nationally certified and licensed relationship counselor who wants to inspire people to unlock the power of their authentic self in order to live peaceful, purposeful, and positive lives without regrets. That seems like a pretty good fit for here. <laughs> Not only is she a psychotherapist, she's also an inspirational keynote speaker as well as an author of a book, uh, Beyond Messy Relationships, and I think those are on the back table in case you'd like to purchase one afterwards. And that book combines a mixture of psychological wisdom and also spiritual inspiration. The book was among the, the uh, top ten finalists for the Author Academy Awards. So wow. that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. In addition to all of this, uh, every week Jody, uh, Judy hosts a podcast called Better Relationships, Better Life. And she interviews relationship therapists and resilient entrepreneurial couples. That's, that's pretty good, yeah. Uh, as an advocate of relationship dignity, she believes that when we have better relationships, we enjoy a better life. Her talk today is, is perfect timing for this time of year when we find ourselves in the midst of family and friends and strangers and good morning, Beth. <laughs> and all sorts of ways where we gather together to celebrate the holidays. And Judy jokes that it took her five years to complete a two-year program to become a psychotherapist. That's not bad. It took me five years for a four-year degree and <laughs> other things. But I know that it was time well spent. So please join me this morning in extending a, wel a welcome to Judy as she speaks about what every relationship needs, no matter what generation you're in. Judy Herman. Oh, let me turn the mic on. Details. <laughs> that was an amazing song. Thank you very much. Thank you really goes really well with what I'm speaking about today. And those of you that are, look, are watching on Facebook streaming, I'm going to ask you some questions for you to put in the chat. So really listen in as I talk today about what every relationship needs, no matter what generation you're in. Every year for the fat plat up, uh, Every year for the last few years, I and my youngest son, who's the father of a couple of little girls, my granddaughters, we go out hiking. So this last time, we went to Craven's house, and we walk up the mountain, the hiking trail. I'm with my walking sticks, and he's got my little granddaughter on his back. So keep in mind, we are, um, I'm a, I am a uh, baby boomer, and he's a millennial. And then my little granddaughter is uh, Gen Alpha. Did y'all know that the name of Gen Alpha? How many people are raising Gen Alphas right now? Which is uh, from 2012 on. You, okay, you're a parent of a Gen Alpha? All right, there you go. How many are grandparents of, of those that were born 2012 on? I think that's the date anyway. And people on Facebook. Yes, that is, uh, actually it's 2013 to 2025 is Gen Alphas. So those of you that are watching by way of Facebook, write down yes if you're a parent of a, a Gen Alpha or a grandparent. But we're having this conversation, my son and I, and he brings up the subject because, you know, kids change from the time they're born until they become a grown adult and parents of that. But he's very interested in, in generations. And it's really likely that there's not a lot of people in the baby boomer generation that like to go hiking, although I found it the other way around, especially here at Unity. <laughs> so he said, Mom, he said something I'll never forget. He'll, he said, Mom, 
I think you were born in the wrong generation. He said, you think and you act like a millennial. <laughs> I'm taking that as a compliment. But there's a bigger picture here, because like I said, I'm here at a place here in Unity of Chattanooga where things are rather atypical, right? I think there's a lot of boomers here that do hike and do other things and are not just retired and sit in front of the TV and are stagnant. Because where else can you go on a Sunday morning and actually dance your prayers? Right. <laughs> and Doug, your sermons have been so inspiring to me, such a breath of fresh air. How, and they're rather atypical, okay? <laughs> but I love it, and we are in good company here. We come in all kinds of like family systems. I got to tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, if I can do this easily, okay? So Shannon showed me how to do this easily. I got to take a sip of water. Just a little bit about me. I got a lot of initials behind my name, but I didn't always used to have that. And it really doesn't matter, honestly, other than I've um, specialized in the relationships all my life, and here's why or how. So I, I have discovered these patterns in my family back from generations. So from generations before I was ever thought about, this pattern existed. Significant people in my life. I myself was one of four children in my family of origin. My mom is one of four children in her family of origin. And then my maternal grandmother, which is my, my mom's mom, is one of four. And then also, my great-grandmother was one of four children in her family. And so we go back here, and I myself, guess how many kids I had? <laughs> I had four kids in my first marriage. And there was a time that I had four grandchildren. But now some, um, yeah, some alphas came along, and I do have four plus one. So I have five grandchildren. There's patterns that we have in our family. And I'm just thinking about the fact that you all, all of us, have come from these generations way before we were ever thought of. And there's been some things that have passed down to each of us. But it, I, I gotta think that maybe God had planned for me way before I was even a twinkle in God's eye, that I was to be a relationship therapist. Not only have I tried doing relationships all of my life in a personal way, and I've been saturated with relationships intimately, family-wise, lots of messes along the way, don't get me wrong, and I've, I've concentrated on that throughout my entire career. And I've got a feeling that once we get aware of the patterns that have been passed down to us, we can connect some dots. What is it that your passion is? And that's why we're here today. We're gonna to talk about what every relationship needs. And we have these families and these systems and these cultures, and they're all so imperfect, aren't they? So some of you really identify with this because I've heard some of your stories that you've spoken about while you're here. I come from a very conservative faith denomination. You don't smoke, lots of don'ts, lots of don'ts in this. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't cuss, you don't play cards, and definitely don't ever engage in premarital dancing. <laughs> I've learned along the way, after three decades of trying to fit into a box and the way I was supposed to be, and this man being the spiritual leader of the home and wife being submissive and all of that, I tried figuring that out for the longest time. It did not work for me. And then I learned to, to dance, and I found out that all this pent-up emotion and the trying to fit in, I had a freedom of dancing. And, and that's, I mean, yeah, where these things come from? And not only did I discover dancing, because actually becoming a psychotherapist, specializing in relationships, is definitely not my first career. My first career was raising poor human beings. I homeschooled there for a while, again, trying to fit in, and that was basically my first career. But I wanted to figure out relationships. 
And I found out that emotions, like the movement in life, life is like dancing, but our emotions are designed to move in and out of our relationships and our lives, and we're supposed to feel and feel deeply. Here's what happens. Most people have not learned that how to name their emotions, how to integrate their emotions into their life. I mean, think about it. Back five generations ago, Oprah wasn't around, or Phil Donahue, or some of those others that we've been exposed to. But we have emotions, and we are to integrate them because they're God-given, and none of them are meant to be stuck. We're supposed to let them flow, let them be temporary messengers to our souls. We're getting, we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas and the holidays and gathering with family. So if you're anything like me, you like to have people over. And you might put out your favorite china. You might even have used cloth napkins. And you'll have everybody bring what they're supposed to bring. There's been times I've maybe hosted 20 people or so in my home. How many of y'all done that? How many people do that? Okay, yeah. So people come and we sit around the table, right? We honor, we listen to our guests, but then after a few hours, they leave, right? That's what we are to do with our emotions. Now, we've all categorized our emotions. We either have positive or negative, but they just are, and they all have messengers. Emotions are actually messengers to our souls, but if we've not learned how to name them, we've not learned how to integrate them into our lives, and they get they get spewed out like anger and resentment for a long time. Here's what I want to do. I want to share part of my story, but I know that what I'm sharing in my story is not just my story. No, it's your story too. I, I actually have a couple of volunteers that I asked. So Keith's going to come up and Linda's going to come up and I'm going to demonstrate something. This is what happens with our emotions, okay. So I, ha I don't know how to do this and this at the same time, but I'm gonna ask Linda to put on this heavy vest. Okay, this is a very heavy vest. And actually you need to stand in between, here we go, right there. All right, I want you to feel that and stand right there. Okay, okay so I want you to make sure you're in the camera, everybody can see that. <laughs> okay, she's in the camera, she is wearing this weighted vest. Okay, <laughs> now how many people are like weight, uh, weight people, like you do weights? Nobody, that's fine. I didn't know either. I didn't even know that those things existed, and I saw that, and I thought, I'm going to buy that, because it got it on Amazon. It came in time, so there you have it. But I had this idea, because what happens with our stagnant emotions is they kind of get, like, they're heavy, right? But you can feel that right now. Keith? We're going to say that you, you lived with your vest for a long time, and you decided, well, you know, you still have those. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Linda, how does that feel? Heavy. Okay, it feels heavy. You on the streaming, um, if you can feel the heaviness that Linda is experiencing with this heavy weight, weighted vest, write down heavy, okay? We want to know that you're there. All right, so here's what happens with the family, okay, and the culture, and the religion, and the things that we believe. We have some old beliefs that are wrapped up in the, the weight of that, okay? And they are so much a part of us. Now, Linda, I'm going to ask you, what would it be like if you showered with that thing every day? <laughs> <That's> messy. <laughs> Very difficult. Okay, all right. Well, what about if you tried... Oh, you're supposed to have your arms out. I was supposed oh, to direct God. you to have your arms out. Keep your arms out the entire time, okay? We're going to feel this with, we're going to feel this with Keith, okay? And those of you that are on streaming, feel with Keith, okay, what that feels like. So, Linda... So it, yeah, you share, what about if you slept with it every night? Very uncomfortable. Okay, all right. But you know, after a while, if this has been passed down, let's just say mom wore that, grandma wore it, everybody in your family wore it. Like it'd probably be part of you, right? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, all right. So here's what happens is this is so much a part of us, right? Right. These, these, and it could be guilt, it could be regret. How you doing there, Keith? <laughs> How does that feel? How does that feel? That's good. 
feeling heavier by the minute. Okay, heavier by the minute. Hang on there because that's what you're supposed to do. Now we're going to ask you, you know, to dance in a few minutes because your wife leads us in dancing all the time. So we're going to, um, we're just going to even imagine with Linda, she thinks that her, um, her vest is actually part of her. It's part of her skin and she's going to be wearing stuff on top of it, trying to be joyful on Christmas and having everybody, but she's got this weight on her. Okay, how does that feel? Uh, still feels that way. Okay. All right, so here's what happens. How do you feel there, Keith? I mean, you've gotten rid of your vest before, right? You still have some stuff, but you don't even know they're there. Yeah. With... Shoulders start to feel. Okay, shoulders start to feel. <laughs> All right, you put your arms down. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and take this off of you all to keep you comfortable. Actually, keep it on for a moment. My, I'm feeling my mouth gets dry. Hold on. Keep it on, on for a moment because I want to. Um, I also want to share. There was a time. There was a time in which. Huh, hold on. Hold on. A time in which I felt this heaviness, and it was all bubbling up. And here's what happens. When we wear this for a long time, we think it's part of who we are. And then an event happens in our life, and then we're exposed to it. But we still don't know how heavy it is. You can keep it if you want. You know, try to. <laughs> so I was feeling such... There was, there was so many things going on. I had a, another son go out to Seattle, and I was feeling that loss as a mom. I had another one getting married, and I felt that loss. And, you know, and then just all the stuff from the divorce and thinking, oh, if I don't leave this, and if I don't leave that, and then this wouldn't have happened. And do you all know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I cried and cried and cried, and I could not stop crying. I called up my therapist, and I had an appointment with her. And by the way, this happens a lot in therapy. Okay, it's okay to go to therapy, number one. But I went to my therapist and I was explaining everything and, and I just couldn't even start crying. But she said, she said, Judy, you walk in the light with which you're given. Like here I am and, and I'm seeing some things I hadn't seen before. And she said, it's kind of like having this weak powered battery flashlight and you're going to, through this dark woods and you're on this hike, and you're trying to make your way, and you have the tools and whatever's been passed down to you from your family, and you do the best you can, okay? You do the best you can, but here you are at this stage in your life, there's a spotlight, and you see some things you didn't see before. Let's have grace for this younger mom self. Let's have grace for her, because you weren't over here. And usually it takes something huge, usually for most people, to realize you're wearing this vest or these arm weights and you don't even know it. There was a woman that I had interviewed. Are you all okay for me to do one more thing? Yeah. Well, you, you stand there? Okay. <laughs> I love doing my podcast, Better Relationships, Better Life. And, um, and by the way, so... So I think it's episode three. It was early on. Joanne Miller, I interviewed. She and her husband, Dan, had been married for 53 years. But I had been in their home before, their grandparents. And you know you see this outside of people, right? And you see the live, liveliness in their lives and how joyful they are. And so Dan was my mentor. I'd been in their home. Joanne wrote a book called um, goodness, creating, uh, creating a safe haven, like creating a safe haven in your home. Anyway, I went through the whole interview, but I asked something that I was interested in, but I always, I always uh, put the, the thing and say, well, some listeners out there might ask this question <laughs> rather than me. No, I asked a question because I said, what if people are, are watching this and, and they have so much regret and they think, that's wonderful for that couple, but look at me. And here's what she said, it was very profound, because we, we've got to be careful not to judge people on the front end. There's always a story. Keep Linda in mind, she's got this heavy vest. Keith's got these things here. And here's what Joanne said. She said, it's never too late for a new beginning. Regret is pointless. And that's not because I've done everything perfectly in my life. Regret doesn't serve me because I know I did the best with what I knew and the tools I had at the time. I could spend the rest of my life feeling guilty about the things I've done wrong, but that won't do any, anything other than destroy me from the inside out. 
that doesn't work well. I had a certain toolbox and a certain set of experiences and knowledge at each point, and I did the best I could. I never set out to destroy people, myself or my home. These tools and that knowledge changed in the different seasons of our lives. Okay. You that are watching on the streaming, we're going to see, does this resonate with you? Put a yes if it does. If you resonate with this, how do you feel right now with that vest? It's becoming uh, more and more present, but just kind of feeling more a part of me. Oh. And I just kind of, my knees are, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm feeling it, but oh, this is normal. No, but <laughs> you're feeling it in, in your knees, and I'm telling you, the stuff that does pile up emotionally affects you yeah. physically. What about you, Keith? Anything? Any words? If not, that's okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> We're going to relieve these folks here. They're probably like, okay, you can go ahead and take those off if you'd like. <laughs> Like I said, it's usually something very, very drastic for most people. And I'm one of those most people. It took something very, very drastic in my life for me to realize this vest is not part of me. I can let it go. How do you feel now, Linda? Yeah, you can breathe. Much lighter. Oh my goodness. Yeah, how do you feel there, Keith? Better. Better. Okay, how do y'all feel on the Facebook live streaming? Do you feel a little bit of relief now? <laughs> I hope so. But yes, if you do. But it was Mother's Day of 2020. Keep in mind, Mother's Day is like, to me, like sacred. And that my beloved second husband, whom I met through ballroom dancing, by the way, and who had managed his bipolar disorder for many years, he said to me, Judy, I need to go to the hospital. Now, if the average person saw this scene in a movie, they might think it was a rational decision. But unbeknownst to me, the delusions of his psychosis were in full force. In other words, he was out of tune with reality. They were after him. He feared for his life. He needed to be at the hospital in order to be safe. There were factors leading up to this, of course. Brother-in-law passed away suddenly in February. And then the, the reaction, the entire planet's reaction to the pandemic was the perfect storm, awakening the mental illness that had, begun, had, that had become dormant for a season. But this mental and marital trauma wasn't the first time. The catalyst, actually, for me to write my book, Beyond Messy Relationships, Divine Invitations to Your Authentic Self, was husband's break with reality in 2017. It was a huge risk for me to put it out in the world. Talk about messy. I didn't know if my marriage was even viable then. And you know what? My marriage did recover to the point. By the time it was published in 2019, in September, we had a celebration. We had a, a book release party in Chattanooga. And he was on stage, and he gave me flowers, and it was beautiful. He was actually my biggest cheerleader in writing it. That was in September of 2019. And by the way, most therapists who write books will write about the intense and dramatic stories of their clients and not their own. <laughs> 
for me, I decided to be a client in my own book. But I show up as a therapist at the beginning of each of the chapters in order for readers to have insights and wisdom into their own lives. So it's not just memoir. But honestly, it was a huge risk for me because I, number one, didn't know if my marriage was even viable. I didn't know what the consequences would be for my family. I feared that my clients would read it and say, and why are we seeing her as our therapist? <laughs> this vest began to shed. I thought I'd shed a bunch of it before, but honestly, it was kind of like with Keith wearing those weights, like maybe the vest was gone, but those weights were still there. But every time I sat down to write, there was freedom, there was flow. It was like God was using all of that to integrate all the trauma that I had been through into this book. And by the way, I want to mention a scripture that really came out of me and I just hang on to it. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. So on that Mother's Day of 2020, when he said, Judy, I need to go to the hospital, he went to the hospital and never came back in his right mind. At a time when I believed that there was resurrection in that second marriage, the loss was overwhelming. I faced the status of being a twice divorced relationship therapist. After a total of 40 years of marriage, and a woman that was saturated with relationships all my life. The whole world was facing the trauma of the pandemic. Mental illness was becoming more known than we've ever known. And I wasn't alone in my struggles. None of us are alone in our struggles. So when I realized that he wasn't coming back, and that oh, my whole status had changed. I had to let go of those weights that you saw on Keith's wrist. They were like almost physical weights in mine. I went out on my back deck and I put my arms way out and I looked up at the sky and I said, God, here I am. I'm choosing to live my most vibrantly authentic life. Because I am a person who is worthy of dignity, love, and respect. What every relationship needs, no matter what generation you're in, dignity, love, and respect. You just heard an intense and dramatic story, but you know, this is a story, and it's my story. Yours is different, but this story also, and so does not yours, represents something much bigger, much bigger, bigger truths. We are all designed to grow and to grow up. If you've got something to write with, I love it that you're writing here, Judy, that's great, and those that are doing the streaming, write this down. Write down the word awareness and circle the letter A in awareness. Write that down in the chat. And so we're all designed to grow and grow up, but we've got to be aware of those patterns that have been passed down to us. We've got to be aware that there is a heavy vest that we are wearing. And number two, write down the word intentional. We need to be intentional, curious, about the messages of our emotions. Our emotions come and they come and go, just like our guests, right? We listen to them. And then we switch some things out based upon their messages. We change things to align more with the truth of our dignity and value and worthiness. So circle the letter I. And then write the word risk and circle the letter R because we risk tearing. We risk seeing that there's a vest that we've been wearing all our lives. We risk taking that vest off. But, as you were saying, Linda, whew, 
They don't realize. And honestly, in the last couple of years, I had no idea that life could be so vibrantly beautiful. Wow. Our lives are valuable. We are all worthy of dignity, love, and respect, and every relationship needs growing alignment with this truth. Here's my new belief, or I'm going to say new narrative. My new narrative about this, because I really had it. I was hung up big time, which I'm kind of getting hung up right now. Maybe I'll leave it. Can you still hear me? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm not, I don't even identify anymore as a quote-unquote twice-divorced relationship therapist, okay? Like, nobody wants to be that. <laughs> so I re-identified myself as an uncoupled woman. An uncoupled woman. That sounds a little bit nicer, I guess. And you know, the thing is, I took a, a hike with my grown son, and we had this conversation. Like, I didn't lose my kids. I was worried about them. But relationships are resilient, and so aren't your grown kids, for those of you that need to know that message. And yeah, it's like another thing. I, I've, I've gained some pet peeves along the way that um, I don't refer to my former husbands as exes. Nobody wants to be an ex. They're former husbands. And my story is, is that it took 40 years of marital experiences to two separate men, not at the same time. It took them and those experiences and those life lessons to get me to this place of vibrant authenticity. And not just a place, because we're continually growing throughout our lives. I've had some remarkable things, but that is what has driven me, honestly, on so many levels to do some traveling, to do this podcast, I wanted to surround myself with people who align with that truth. And I needed to get out of what in AA they call stinking thinking, right? <laughs> and, and make sure that I'm not picking up that vest again. Now, what are we gonna do with this? I'd like, I'd like for you, okay, those that wrote it down. What do those first letters spell? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like for us, because the air we breathe is so essential in our lives. And every breath you take, you think about awareness, intentions, risks of growth, wherever you are in your life, be thinking about these things. So I'd like us, I know you did this earlier, but everybody kind of like put your feet flat on the floor best you can and straighten your back best you can. We're going to take deep, about three deep breaths of air, and I want you to just really notice awareness, intentionality, and risk. So take a deep breath in. Ready? And then slowly breathe out. And take another deep breath and find your own natural rhythm of breathing. Allow these emotions to dance in and out. Keep on breathing, take another deep breath. Recognize these emotions and what are their messages. But the beautiful thing about it, every breath we take is God-breathed, inspired. What a gift we have to be in this present moment right now. So, so what you just did, you can, you can open your eyes now, but I just kind of want to explain when it comes to your body, and we, we hear this all the time, and I really grounded this on so many levels. It slows down the nervous system. Can we welcome even the anger or the irritability? What's the message here? What do I need to listen to? Write it down in a journal. Get the wisdom. Let them go. Bye-bye. We don't need you anymore. It's okay. We honored you and honor the good, bad, and ugly of our lives. Forgive our younger selves. But that's what I want to invite you to today. And Doug, if you'd like to lead in a meditation.
awareness. Take a moment and just realize from whence you've come. Visualize your parents, your grandparents, your extended family. And in that awareness right now, take a look at some of the arm weights that you have acquired. Take a look at some of the weights that are perhaps heavy on your shoulders, heavy on your heart. And in that awareness, simply know that that is not who I am. That is not who I choose to be. And so right here and right now, simply release those things, let them go. Bless your parents. Bless your grandparents. Bless all those in the extended family because they were doing the best that they knew how to do. And so right now, as you release and let go, there is an intensity that is flowing through you. There is a new vision of a greater self. And it's risky. And yet, you have a divine Mother, Father, God surrounding you this very moment saying, follow me. Let us walk hand in hand. And there is a new you right now birthing, going forward in love and in guidance with a new thought, a new feeling, a new awareness, a new relationship. For this, we are so grateful. Thank you, God. And thank you, Judy. Thank it was you. wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. I will be gentle with myself. I'll be gentle with myself And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child And I will only go as fast As the safest part of me decides to go I will only go as fast as the safest part of me decides to go. And I will love myself. I will love myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child and I will hold myself like a newborn baby child oh man I love that So just imagine holding yourself the way you would hold that newborn baby child. Just wrap your arms around yourself right now and say, oh man, this feels so good. I love myself just the way I am. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, and Landis, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautifully done. Yeah. So now is the time in our service to give back, to let that, let all those wonderful feelings simply flow through you and know that there is an abundance in your life. So I invite each and every one of you right now to take your tithes, and your offerings, your gifts in your hand and simply together with me affirm our offering statement, which is divine love 
through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love, and I receive in abundance. Now, Judy has some of her books for sale on the uh, back table, and uh, she is donating all the proceeds of those sales back to the church. So thank you very much, Judy, for that. Appreciate it. freely given from the heart going going forth through us from a divine guidance to bless not only ourselves but to bless this church to bless our families and through us to bless each and every person we come in contact with and so for this and for so much more we say thank you God so we know time for a few announcements. I call them coming attractions. And most of the time, uh, at 1030, uh, right here on Sunday mornings, uh, we invite you to come in for Dancing with Spirit, led by Laura Noyes. Now, Laura is a little under the weather this morning. She'll, she wasn't here this morning, but I'm sure that next week she'll be right here. And these are just a simple, easy movement with music many, many times. And it simply opens that flow of God's energy flowing through us. And I know that I participate in it, and uh, it, it's, it's just kind of a nice icebreaker. It just, it just works, seems to work very well. Be sure to uh, tune in each week on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. on our Facebook page. And treat yourself to a mi uh, midweek faith lift and with Shannon and sometimes with myself. Shannon, who's going to be with us this Wednesday? Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, Eric Miller. Eric Miller will be with us. This oh, great. Yeah, All right, Eric. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So th this week at uh, Wednesday at 4 o'clock, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's great. Well, on Thursday evenings, there is a um, get-together at Whole Foods on Manufacturers Road at 6 p.m. in the upper mezzanine. And we call this the, our spiritual connection group. And it's a time for just come and if you've got any questions, it's a time to answer the questions. Most often the time we just talk about whatever seems to come up and have a good time and a lot of laughs, lasts about an hour. And so if that's something you'd like to uh, uh, take part in, uh, join us 6 p.m. Manufacturers Road and Whole Foods. And now that December is here, if you plan uh, to do any holiday shopping on Amazon, we want to encourage you to use the Amazon Smile Foundation, which will pay a percentage of your purchase back to the church. And if you'd like to do that, uh, just go to smile.amazon.com and choose Unity of Chattanooga as your charity. If you'd like to become a member of Unity of Chattanooga, or if you'd just like to know a little bit more about us and what we believe, there is a sign-up sheet on the back table. And starting on Wednesday evening, January 11th, we'll be holding some orientation classes on Zoom. And we need your email so that we can send you a link to be able to join that. And these classes are interactive uh, with plenty of time for questions. So if you like what you hear on Sunday and want some more information, please, please join us then. Was there a question in the back? Did you say next weekend? No, January 11th. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought you said 
No, that's all right. Back to earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, January 11th uh, is when that. Remember that we have uh, prayer chaplains wearing purple shawls in the room. Uh, Terry's in the, in the back and also Keith oftentimes put one on. If you'd like personal prayer after the service today. And next Sunday, as another holiday season is upon us, we'll turn our, fo our focus towards the Advent season. And we want to celebrate that with purity, warmth, and hope and keep that feeling of Christmas alive. And last but not least, we hope that you can join us for fellowship after the service. We always have some great food in the back and plenty of it, so please stay with us. And now let's stand and sing our peace song. like that, there's always a little risk. Yeah. Have a great time. Breathe deep. Yeah. Yeah. 